What's going on, everyone? So Lakers have a big game today, and, and then, of course, the even bigger game tomorrow. Uh, they play the Utah Jazz today, and then they follow that up uh, with the second of a back-to-back -back against the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, LeBron is the only one at this time that is questionable, uh, but LeBron is always questionable, and he's going to remain questionable until the season is done, right? Uh, but there are questions about him playing the back-to-back. -back. Personally, I don't see him not playing this back-to-back. -back. He knows how important it is. The Lakers are in control of their destiny going forward. If they win outright, they are the fifth seed, uh, guaranteed. Uh, if a couple things fall a certain way, then they could end up getting the sixth seed if they lose a game or two. Um, but most likely, you got to win outright. The way it's shaping up is Lakers are either the fifth seed or they're the seventh seed. And if you can avoid the play-in, you avoid the play-in. So I expect LeBron James to play both games. Um, then Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is probable. Uh, we, they've said it. The Lakers have came out and said it. The, the Anthony Davis himself has came out and said it, that he is going to play on both of these back-to-backs. We got the reports, uh, what, a month ago now or whatever, that Anthony Davis w uh, got the, the decision. Do you want to play that Houston Rockets back-to-back? Or do you want to play this Clippers back-to-back? -back? And he chose the Clippers, which made more sense, right? You're playing the Utah Jazz, and then you're playing the Clippers. Much more valuable than, who was it, the Pelicans and the Rockets, right? Especially because that Clippers game very likely could be the deciding uh, game for the sixth seed. Phoenix Suns, they very well could be sitting everybody. They might have the four seed locked up by the time the Lakers play them. Why are they going to kill themselves when they're going to have to very likely play the Lakers in the first round? I could see them resting, guys. But even if they don't, that's a game that the Lakers, I do believe, could win. Uh, they'd be at home the last... They're, well, technically, they're at home the last three games uh, because you have the Clipper game, which is a road game, but it's Staples Center. And then you have the Suns at home and then the Jazz at home again. Uh, the Jazz games should be gimme games. And then the big question is D'Angelo Russell, who left with foot soreness. But Darvin Ham himself said that that was just precautionary. Um, you know, they didn't really need D'Angelo Russell for that game against the Houston Rockets. So why force him and risk him getting getting hurt? Uh, but we are going to need him for this back-to-back. -back. We very likely need him against the Utah Jazz and then, of course, against the Clippers. So having all of our guys ready to go uh, is very key, very important, very viable. Uh, Mo Bamba, of course, is still out. He's very likely not going to return till the playoffs. Now, the Lakers did get some good news in Walker Kessler. Uh, Walker Kessler is out uh, for the remainder of the season with uh, due to uh, concussion protocol. Uh, now, this is good for the Lakers. I mean, obviously, you know, you don't want to see any players uh, have any in injuries, especially something like a concussion. Uh, but also how much of it is just the, the Utah Jazz are packing it in, right? Like that, they've already kind of done that. They shut down Jordan Clarkson, Colin Sexton for the season. Um, you know, how much is really like, hey, let's like, Walker Kessler is really that hurt or how much is it is like hint hint wink wink hey Kessler you need to sit right because he's their young rookie he's going to make very likely the all rookie team um he's a guy that if you look at his stats right because I've seen like little comments and people say you know like you know Walker Kessler only averaged nine points he was averaging 9.2 points, 8.4 rebounds, but he was averaging 2.3 blocks while shooting 72% from the floor. He was a real threat. He's had some big monster games. He's been very good for the Utah Jazz, right? So this is absolutely, undoubtedly, a gift for the Lakers, right? And he's going to miss this game, and he's going to miss the next game. So right off the bat, the Jazz are going to be missing half of their players. Um, there's also little murmurs going around. Uh, it hasn't been confirmed. Depending on when you watch this video, it very well could be at that point. Um, but as of the recording of this video, um, Lori Markkinen, there is no word uh, definitively that he is going to sit out. But there are little rumors that the Jazz are going to sit uh, Lori Markkinen, that they're very likely uh, planning to just keep him out uh, so that way they keep basically just they're shutting it down, right? They don't they're not going to make the play in. Uh, there's no point for them to even try to make the play in at this point. They just want draft picks. They just want assets, right? Um, right now, 
They are the 12th seed. They are two and a half games out of the play. It makes zero sense for them to try and fight for a playoff spot for what? Right? Get your get your pieces. Get your draft pick. You have they have four games left. If they lose all four games, they could end up uh overtaking the Blazers and and getting uh, just a better draft pick, which is that's what the goal is, right? So Utah very likely is going to pack it in. They got four, like I said, four more games. Two of those are against the Lakers. These are this these are just gimme games. The Lakers should absolutely win these games. Uh, the Lakers should hopefully handle business very quickly, very handily, so that way we can get guys like Anthony Davis and LeBron James, and D'Angelo Russell, because D'Angelo Russell is dealing with foot problems, get our core guys, right? Maybe even Austin Reeves, you know, Jared Vanderbilt, all those guys. Get all of our main guys, get them the night off, right? Or at least, you know, a half uh, quarter off, right? Handle business. Let's start strong, start commanding. Let's get dominant Anthony Davis early going. Let him, you know, give us 30 in the first half, LeBron James, do LeBron James things. Let LeBron kind of coast this game. Um, You know, have guys get get confident. Let's get, you know, midway through the third quarter, we're up 30. Put, you know, Beasley, Lonnie Walker, Dennis Schroeder, uh, you know, Winning Gabriel, Max Christie. Like, throw all the guys in and, you know, just weather the storm and just maintain long enough so you don't have to put... Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and everybody back in, right? That would be ideal. Let let our main guys, let our core guys sit the fourth quarter out so we don't have to worry about it, and then we can go into that Clippers game at home and, and handle business because that Clipper game is the game that is super viable and important, right? Now, obviously, you don't want to sleep on the, on the Jazz, right? You don't want to end up you know, going in there thinking like, oh, nobody's playing today. It's a wrap. This is cake, you know, whatever, right? This is still a team that can make some noise, right? This is still a team that has guys, um, you know, Taylor Horton Tucker, I'm sure is going to want to have a ball in game, right? He's, he's going to want the revenge game and he's been averaging 18, what has he been averaging like 18, five and eight or something like that. Um, since he's been a starter and he's and he just came off a game against Brooklyn where he gave where he gave up thirty and eight. So he's he's probably gonna have himself a game. Um, you have a, a what is his name? A, a Baji. Um, you know he's been really good for them. Uh, Olenek is still a guy that can score. Uh, Chris Dunn is a guy that can score. I mean they have several guys that can they can still put the ball in the hoop, right? Even without Walker Kessler. Um, you know, obviously, if they don't have Laurie Markin in, that would be massive because that's a guy that could go off for 30 a night. Uh, but regardless, this is a game that the Lakers should absolutely win. But, you know, they got to they gotta do their job. They got to they gotta start out. None of those slow starts, none of that nonsense. Go into Utah, handle business. Let's get some rest. Let's catch a little break. And let's move on to the Clippers game and go get this win and secure and lock up the six seed. Right, we. I mean, look. If we beat the Jazz, we could have the sixth seed locked up at the end of the Utah game, right? Because you do have the Warriors um, playing today, so you have a couple key games. But the Warriors play today, and the Warriors uh, play the Thunder. The Thunder absolutely need this game. This is because again, I mean, Dallas. Like, if the Thunder lose this game, then and Dallas wins, the Thunder could be out of the play. And, I mean, the way that they've played, it looks like they want to make that play in, right? Now, I think from a front office and organization standpoint, I don't think they really care either way. I think if you if you hook them up to a lie detector test, I think that they would tell you, you know, like, hey, we actually want to lose games. But, you know, SGA and all these guys, like, they want to win games. They want to show, like, hey, we're a good, young, hungry team. So... Ideally, the Thunder beat the Warriors. That would be wonderful if that could happen. They, they, you know, they they smack the Warriors, and then we have the sixth seed locked up. That could be huge for the Lakers. But regardless, get the job done. You know, um, you know, re- rely on the back of uh, of your role guys. Let Rui 
Rui just is coming off of a 2012 game, right? Let's get Rui going. You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't need Anthony Davis and LeBron James to give you 40 tonight in order to win, right? Let's get some of the other guys going. Let's start. Let's build up some of the confidence, right? Let's keep Rui in rhythm because we could use him for the Clippers game. We could use him for the Suns game. Right? Let's get Austin Reeves going. Let's get some of these guys going. I mean, obviously, if it's not working, go, you know, go to old reliable, dump the dump the ball down to, to Anthony Davis, let him go to work, right? LeBron James, go get some easy buckets, right? Don't let the game get pulled away. But if LeBron James and Anthony Davis can just coast, like I don't care. Like if if Anthony Davis has nine points and only takes four shots this whole game and has seven rebounds and LeBron James has 10 points, you know, on, you know, five shots or whatever. It is just, and you look at, and you're like, did LeBron and AD even play? I am totally okay with that as long as we win, right? Like if LeBron and AD just coast this entire game and we win, that's the key. We have to win. But if they can, if they can, and you can get Rui going, you can get you know Beasley going, you know you can get Reeves going, maybe get some Lonnie Walker in there, get Lonnie going, you know if you can get everybody else going and have them just beat the 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 Utah Jazz, and you kind of just have LeBron and AD there as like a, a break glass in case of emergency type thing, perfect, right? And hopefully you can win in some dominant fashion, so that way AD and LeBron they're healthy, they're good to go, and we're 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 stepping in to Staples Center, getting ready to to lock up that six seed. That that's what we need to do. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? You excited? You pumped? Are you excited for these two games? Um, it cannot come sooner for me. But I'd love to hear however you feel down in the comments below.